This is Luke Monis Explained, everybody. I'm Luke Monis. Um, we are in a new environment, a new studio. I The current studio that I'm trying to construct here in Los Angeles is, well, it's just that. It's under construction. I'll, you wait, and I'll, and I'll stop looking at yourself on the monitor. You wait, and I'll throw you in. I'll throw in. What, what is it? I'll throw to you. That's what. Okay. Um, but... We're very happy here in this new environment, my guest and I. Um, you've seen him. I would say bring it a little closer. You've uh, you've seen him on the show before. You've heard him on the show before. You've experienced him on the show before. Um, it's Ismail Lutfi. He's here. Hey. How about how about that? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, returning guest, returning champ, returning guest. Not the first returning guest. Huh. But maybe the last. Hmm, that's no, interesting. I that's mean, it's it's an it's a young pod. No, no, and I know. you've already had quite a few returning guests. I'm trying to build a kind of <laughs> network of. I'm trying to build like a cinematic universe. Okay. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, no, good. good no, good. and I mean, listen, if you don't want to be a part of the regular rotation no, of friends, I'm Ant Man. It's on the show. All right. <laughs> no, listen, I we're on a couch together. This mm. is uh, a in lot stark of contrast. Are you putting up pillows? Are you are you insecure about yeah. being so close to me on the couch? You're putting up a wall of pillows. I mean, this is <laughs> very kind of um, illustrative of our relationship. You're putting up walls. There's um, walls, but they're they're cozy. They're soft walls. Mm. I wanted to say this. Speaking of taking our friendship to a new level, mm. um, I wanted to open by saying that first of all, the last podcast episode we did, I thought it was great, but it was a little sleepy. And I'm trying to yeah. inject more. You, you, already, you're coming at me with this very sleepy energy, and what I need you to do is I need you to turn pep it up, it up. Pep okay. It up. <laughs> okay. So, well, for the record, last p pod, you were like, "Hello." I had w it was like a 9 a.m. podcast. It was not 9 a.m. It, like it was early. In it was the 11 a.m. It was early in the okay, morning. Okay, so what I need you to do is like I'm trying to like maintain the energy here. I'm a little frenetic, but what I'm doing that in order to inject that into you. Okay. So, we're not, so this isn't like the. Uh, Luke's lazy time hour. Okay. What do you want from me, man? I want energy. Okay. I want All right. Ads. <clears throat> imagine yeah. okay. that this is like um, this is a Great American Joke Off. Imagine that this is the Great American Joke Off, the television show, which we uh, forged our friendship on, and mm. which we will um, hopefully do again. We haven't heard yet about. We, we're hoping for. <laughs> I don't think it's coming back. Wood. Well, don't say that. Okay. It'll. Yeah, it's going to come back. It may come back. Yeah. Um. I hope it comes back. We're hoping we we have hopes. We have high hopes for it. Did I fuck shit up by tap by by tapping the thing? All right. I wanted to make sure that by ironically by Are, knocking on you, wood. Is you scolding me going to be a part of the pod? Yeah, everything's part of it. Wow. Okay, energy. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah. You ever? Uh, okay. You ever so, fuck or something? Whoa. Sorry. Were you trying to get me banned <laughs> off YouTube? Sorry. You're I'm trying sorry. to get me. You can say the f word. I mean, I, are you sure? I'm 99% sure you can't. I mean, the podcasts I've listened to, they're saying a lot worse. Oh, well, we're listening to different podcasts. Yeah. Because I'm listening only to old episodes of The Daily over and over <laughs> again. I'm listening to it, – it, it's actually uh, pretty confusing because it's daily episodes from uh, 2018. Mm. Oh, wow. And, uh, good, good era of The Daily. Yeah. Good era. I, probably I mean, the only era of The Daily I actually listen to, too, in all seriousness. Anyway, we're, we're getting sidetracked. Energy, yeah. energy, yeah, energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You picked me up <sighs> – it's okay. It's late at night. Also, uh, you now hold the record for the earliest podcast I did and the latest podcast. This I is what I'm all about. I'm all it's, about. It's 2 in the morning right now. Mm. No, it's 9 a.m. But it's, it's 2 in the morning in London where we forged our friendship. Which anyway, is how we measure time now. In London, which actually is how the world, you know. GMT. 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 I don't have to don't tell you. tell me about GMT. <laughs> <laughs> GMT. Uh, Greenwich, come on. Speaking of GMT, you mm. picked me up. At yeah. the airport on Saturday, and I thought you performed a real mitzvah for me, as my people say. Sure, you performed a real mitzvah for yeah. me, and I thought it was, uh, it was just a really great thing to do. So thank you for that. And what do you think? Don't mention it ever again. But I did it because I feel like our friendship always there. It's a close bond. Sure. Yeah. But it's like an unstable bond. If I knew science, I would knew I would know it. Oh my god, this term. is such a shock to me. That's how I feel. I feel like it's a it's a solid friendship, but it at any moment could turn 
And oh um, no, I really don't feel that way. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm being comedic a little bit. Oh, you're but being comedic a little bit, but but a part of me feels like, well, I, I gotta pick him known. up from the airport. I mean, that's that's what I gotta do for this guy, just so he doesn't can freak I, the fuck out can at I, me. Can I tell you this? Yeah, I have never. I can't remember the last time I asked a friend to pick me up from the airport. I could tell. <laughs> I could tell when you asked me. I could tell that you were you were really. Uh, I texted you. You were, and I you threw were scared. My phone I, the room. I, I was terrified. I, yeah, I could man. feel it. I was terrified. I could feel and it. I'm and, still terrified. But you know the thing that I learned when I was 15 in Ocala, Florida. I had this guy at my mosque named Yusuf, who I came to hate. But Yusuf, good guy. Uh, yeah, he's a good guy. But we had differences. He told me something. He was an older man. He told me something. He said, "People like it when you ask favors of them." That's what he oh, said to me. That's he interesting. Said, when, because we all have this idea that when when you ask a favor of somebody and they they do it for you, you as the 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 one who did the thing is the one that's getting the. Yeah, but by asking me to pick you up, yeah, you know that's that's actually you doing something for you in a way. You, do you understand what I'm saying? Well, you're building the fr- you're building the friendship by yeah. by putting it out there of like, hey, do you want to help me out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're me going, warmed. yeah, sure. You're it's warmed like, by being yeah. asked. But yeah. I will say, it, it makes me feel closer to you. Yusuf's hypothesis. Mm. I smell a title. Um, <laughs> his hypothesis. Mm. It, it's not a hundred percent solid because sometimes people ask me to do things and I feel burdened and overwhelmed. Of course, I mean, there's a fine line. But I will say that t- to his credit, sometimes you get somebody emails you and asks you for something. Yeah. I think in our in our line of work, oftentimes you're being asked to recommend someone for something. Right. Not right. to say that if you've asked me to recommend you for something that I haven't wanted to do it. I just mean in general well. as a rule of thumb. Don't, don't do that well. <laughs> because now we're opening a, a dangerous can of worms. By the way, what sort of hell are you living in if you're asking me for a recommendation? I that, I, that's how I feel. People ask me for stuff and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, like, well, we talked about this on the last episode, but, you know, I I have this perception of you as living this very charmed life, and then I come to know you better and you're you're in hell. I'm in hell. You're in hell. Life and is misery. Of, you're walking around. You're yes. holding you're holding plastic bags. Yes. I really you know? do hold a lot of plastic bags. I have this vision of you. You're kind of walking down like a, a mm-hmm. street in LA. You're sure. holding plastic bags. You're speaking. By the way, was the guy out front on the stoop of this building smoking, smoking crack? crack? Um, it looked like he was. But then when I smelled it, it didn't smell like crack. It smelled like weed. It smelled like weed, but, but it was I'll, coming out of a crack pipe. It was a crack pipe. Was I just want to say, I didn't know, and I feel like maybe I've told this story on this podcast before. I didn't know what crack smelled like until Very unique smell. Until like Powerful. outside of a comedy club in New York last year, someone mm-hmm. was like, "I was like, what does that smell?" And I, it smells like a subway. It smells like the tunnel, the subway tunnel between uh, the one train and the F and L train, like that little thing you go between Seventh Avenue and Sixth oh, Avenue. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, what is that? It smells like that tunnel. And someone was like. That's it's crack, crack. Yeah. and I was like, "Oh wow!" And it's, shout out to that tunnel for just smelling like crack. It's pretty seven. cool. It's one of the few smells that like fe- it smells like a color kind of. It doesn't have like a purple smell, so it causes you to be synesthetic. Yes, it really. Can does. I ask you a question? I was sure. trying to think of this in the in the car ride over here. What is the term orally? Is like the talking visually is seeing. What is the term for smelling? Olfactory. Olfactorily. Olfactory. No, but olfact. I'm talking about the ad. Oh, uh, olfactorily. Olfactorily, because I yeah. have, as you know, I have a very strong olfactory. I know this about a, you. A, a, a lot of emotions for me are associated with the olfactory world, and I was I'm in such a good mood right now because on the drive over here I had the windows open and I was smelling the night blooming jasmine. Oh, I was smelling the honeysuckle and. One of the things I love most about Los Angeles is the smell of the city at night. It really gets me going. The smell nice. during the day gets me going too, but it is impossible to walk around uh, this city There's so city much at vegetation. Night. There's just greens everywhere. It's really hard for me to be bummed out. So a lot of my emotions mm. are associated with mm. just smell. And it smells good in here. It smells crisp in here. It smells professional. It smells like new life. It smells like – is this kind of – this is sort of – uh, I, I didn't want this to be sleepy, but now it's kind of become a manic. No, 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 no. That's okay. I, I like where it's going. Do you have a deviated septum? I don't know. But you, I think you don't. Oh, I. There's no way I have a deviated septum. I, I honestly, dude. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know yeah. how daredevil he can't mm. see, and so he has like um, echolocation. 
I have that, but for smell. For smell. And you can see. I can see and hear, and my smell is heightened, <laughs> and I'm like, I smell things, and I, like, see the future. I really feel that way. I've, al- wow. I've, al- I've always felt that way. I, I think my smell is pretty good, but I also, I also don't think it's my main uh, emotional attachment sensory-wise. I think I'm more of a, a visual guy. Well, smell is most associ- more associated with memory than any other sense. I've heard that. Heard I don't that. Buy that. You don't believe I don't it. Buy that. You think it's vision. I don't buy that. I couldn't. You think well, it's vision? Tell that to what the is, blind. What does 2015 smell like? You don't know, but I can tell you what it looked like. That's true. But I, but specific sense memory of like moments in your life. If I, if I gave you a little bowl hmm. and you smelled it, I could take you back to 1998. But I could probably do the same with a picture. <laughs> you definitely could do that with a picture. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't buy this the smell hype everyone has. Smell oh is my fine, god! But I love smell. Nah, I, I, I like it. Smell. I appreciate it. I appreciate it when when I lose my sense of smell when I get sick. I get sick pretty often. Yeah, and when I do yeah, get do. sick, I do. You're I like lose, a baby. I, I, I <laughs> and I'm like a fuss, I'm a fussy sleeper. I am a baby. This is what happens. Like to ba- babies get sick like every week, and mm-hmm. so do you. I and, get sick um, every week. But you never I, had COVID. That's that's not true. <laughs> I really I said that with a lot of gusto. How many you knew you me COVID? when I had COVID. I had COVID. Did I? I had COVID um, two months ago. Do you remember this drama? Oh, that's right. Uh, I yeah. had COVID, and it was. But I thought you didn't have COVID. Uh, yeah, I didn't have it, but I, I did. I never lost my sense of smell with COVID or my sense of purpose, my mm. sense of direction. Mm. I've lost both. With I've got COVID twice. Both times I lost both. Really? Yeah. Well, you lose your sh- sense of smell, and then you can't taste, and that's the real punishment from God. And then you're losing your sense of purpose yeah. because. Yeah, please. When I when I was floor is yours. when I was 25, I got this job writing on Patriot Act with a Minaj. It was the biggest break. This is when you thought my life was charmed. And it was. I and, mean, at that point, me. it was. I was I was 25. It was great. I moved to New York. Dream job. Blah blah blah. Right. Got married. For a good show. Got married shortly after. Two years later. But years. the day that I got the call that you, that I got the job, my agent called me, told me I went. I was so happy, but I was also sick. And I remember feeling like this is such a. Um, such a moment from God. Right. Like, here's your bet, the best news that you've ever gotten. Right. You're going to get health insurance. You're going to get a good job. You're going to get to move to New York, but mm. try to enjoy that Thai curry you just bought. And I, and I, I was eating Thai curry, couldn't enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, and it made me think, wow, no, nothing is, nothing is that good. Or nothing is more important than your health because okay, sure. you're <laughs> two ways to take it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> sorry, I'm smelling good things. And then my yeah. attitude is I have a sunny attitude. Right you now. really do. Your disposition is sunny, which is weird because you're usually dour. Oh, don't say that. It's true. I mean, the, the, the character that Luke has um, cultivated on this show is a lie. He's a bitter, dour man. I suppose that's true. <laughs> but then you come on here and you're all laughing. Well, you I get it. You have to. No, I, I have a sunny disposition. I'm just, I'm everything. I am I am human. Hmm. I'm a human being. You're the human experience in one minute. I am the human experience yeah. uh, in that everything I do is, is a lie. Sure. And a farce. Hmm. I'm trying to be more authentic. Talked about this last week on the podcast. I'm trying to swear more. And when you say last week, do you mean the episode you recorded yesterday? Yesterday? Didn't you record one yesterday by yourself? No, okay. I didn't. I'm just trying to keep you honest. No, I said I was going to try, but I couldn't set it up in time. <laughs> okay, okay. I wasn't lying to you. Also, I asked you to do this the very last minute, and I wanted to make sure you knew that I nobody can It wasn't like somebody canceled. And even if somebody did, I wouldn't care. I'm fine okay. with filling in. Your return guest. I'm Your a return, return guest. guest. Old reliable, we call you. Mm. You know, a venue sent me a stand-up tape of mine today. Huh. Don't want to say which. It's a very reputable, reputable venue that I enjoy in Los Angeles. And hmm. the uh, it's, it was a set I did in February that I really had a blast on. Yeah, and the set is fun and it's good. It's nice, and it's riffy, great, loose, but the it's just the audio from the mic, oh. so it sounds like I'm bombing. Oh. But you know you can see in my face. Yeah, that you're killing. Oh no, I'm killing. I'm doing well. You can see my face. I'm doing well. But like, it looks insane. And I'm like, I could put this out, but then there are people who'd be like, yeesh, the audience. <laughs> and then people do this emoji. Is anything more hurtful than this emoji? It's pretty bad. You pretty know bad. That one? Yeah, I do that one. I, I don't know what the word is for that. When I when I try to look for it on my phone, I just type out yikes. stressed. Or yikes. But it doesn't come out. So I, just S-T-E and then it comes out. Oh, really? Then if, if you S-T-R, it's gone. What about yikes? The yikes. Emoji. Never tried yikes. Never tried yikes. Yeesh. Yeah. Yikes. I mean, yikes and yeesh are both mean things to ever see. 
You don't want to see either of those on, on a text. Or on a comment. Mm, or do better on a comment. That that makes me mad. Do better. Or the ones that are like, are, you're not a comedian. And it's like, well, of all the criticisms you can lay at my feet, <laughs> that one is just is just not true. It's objectively false, yeah. Uh, it's objectively false. I'm, yeah. on the, I'm on the Great American Joke Off. Yeah, I, I know. You can't touch me. You can't come for me. True. Um, nothing you ever say can mm. affect me. Sometimes I think that you and I are probably uh, more immune to uh, negative criticism, you know, from trolls and stuff than the, the average person because we um, are husks of men who feel mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. and experience nothing. True, true. There is something really powerful about doing a decade of constant negative feedback. Oh, yeah. At a I certain mean, point, you know, you get good feedback, but there are years where it's just nothing but disappointment constantly and, and totally strengthen you probably as a human being. Maybe it weakens you in a way, but even if you have a charm, I completely agree. Even if you have a charmed, successful, yeah. beautiful career from the jump, mm -hmm. you're still doing stand up comedy, which you're going to bomb. Mm. You're going to have bad nights. And it's, it's even on its, I'll say this. Yes. And I don't know if you'll agree. I think I do. Even on its best night, in its best form, it's embarrassing. It's trashy. Well, it's trashy and it's, it's embarrassing. Trashy. Yeah. What is happening? One of the things that yeah. ruined my mind a few years into, and I don't think this is us talking shop. This is more of a looking at com the human perspective. Because I, I get self-conscious about having a podcast and talking shop. Mm. I don't think that's what we're doing. Out of the shop. This is not talking shop because <laughs> what I'm about to say, I don't know if you're going to agree or not. Mm. Um uh, five, four or five years into comedy, I finally watched the audience hmm. during someone else's set, and they were doing well. But like seeing people's faces during a comedy show, it yeah. broke my brain. People yeah. like like elbowing their friends, and I don't know something. So about what, it. what about it? Was it? What, did you feel sad for the people that they were having a good time, or did you feel like they weren't? <laughs> because I feel that way too. <laughs> I do feel I that know way. It's that. I mean, we've all, every comedian has a thought of like, who are any of these people ever? Yeah, um, I can't believe anyone ever comes to anything. Of course, when I think about my family, I'm the youngest <laughs> of five, none of them would ever go to a comedy show, <laughs> ever, 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 ever. And I, I have the thought sometimes it's almost like a recurring nightmare of like, what yeah. if my bro I'm about to go on, and I'm about to say a bunch of ridiculous, dirty, stupid things. And yeah. I think, what if my brother Hassan was here in the front row? front row watching like he with would his be, children with his with his four-year-month-old son yeah he would be horrified yeah. he would be horrified and not even from a like religious or moral standpoint he would just be horrified that his brother was doing something so crass from a human level or yeah. your ancestors. i think one of the things interesting to think Ooh. about is like you're performing at a bar you think about your ancestors Ooh. i mean my ancestors i mean we got yeah. some muslims and by the way when i say that I'm thinking of your ancestors. Yeah, not mine. Yeah. I mean, my ancestors would no, be fine with no. it. My, my ancestors, ancestors I, would be. My ancestors would be would be thrilled. Your would ancestors would watching seppuku. me. They're not even Japanese. But they would do it. They would. They would they, get a wakizashi. They, they, <laughs> Shogun, great show. We love Shogun. No, it is it is an embarrassing art form, and um, I think it's special though, to do. It's special to do. I think that too. I think I, I I have both feelings. I feel like it's embarrassing, but also like you are just talking. And people are listening and having a good time. That's cool. That's yeah, no, cool. it's cool to it's make cool. an art out of just talking and you know tricks of yeah tricks of the mouth and tricks of the mind. Totally, and it's just like the it's a whole ecosystem. It's it's this deep thing that we obsess over and we're thinking right. about twenty four seven. But then these people come and they watch and they think about it for an hour and a half and then they never think about it ever again. Exactly. Yes, and their enjoyment of it is um, it's pure. Their enjoyment of it is it's it seems effortless to them. So mm -hmm. they're like, oh, this is a guy just talking. But you're right. There's something kind of beautiful about someone someone obsessed over this very deeply. Yes. These um these curtains that are here, I had them in my uh my apartment in Brooklyn. Oh yeah, I've seen these in New York apartments many times. Yeah, it's a very like it's like a standard guy curtain. Standard guy curtain. Yeah. Guy Curtin, I think I went to college with him. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Guy Curtin, sponsored by Guy Curtins. Um, what, what did you, you want to bring up today? Did on you the ever show? think well, first before we get into that? Did you, do you ever think about this? Is a thought I would have first five years. You're on stage, terrible show, bombing, terrible. Twelve people in the audience, no one's never laughing. happened to me. Go on, sure. Um, no, I saw your last set. Happens okay. to me still constantly, <laughs> to you all the time. Yeah. Do you ever have that thought of, this is what I would always think, these 12 people are watching me, 
bomb and they're feeling pity and, and revulsion. Yes. And I think if I could just pick you 12 up, just yeah. pick you up and time travel to yesterday to the other show where I was killing and yes. plop you down. Yes. Compl- you would have a completely different perspective on me. I think that I used to think that all the time I'd be bombing and just like, yeah, you, well, you guys don't know. <laughs> You guys just don't know. You don't know. Yeah, you're. I was you're, doing well twenty four hours ago. Exactly. You're not aware of the. You're not in on the secret of my. You don't know. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 No, I think that's totally valid. I. Yeah, because I, their experience, like in that moment. Yes. It's like this is the truth. The truth is that there's a comedian on stage who's, who, the who's name bad. Of, the name I can't remember because he's bad. I don't want right. to remember. Right. That's their truth. He totally. sucks, and it's he me. Sucks. It's me. Yeah. I my whole life is it's me bah, sucking. I even saw a comment on. You shouldn't look at comments, but yeah. sometimes it's inevitable. It's sometimes you see something on Instagram, and it's just something you can do. I remember seeing a comment. This was a few years ago. Someone being like, it "Must have been after COVID," because the comment was. I saw this guy last year bombing his ass off on a roof. Well, that's almost endearing. What do you mean? Because it was it kind is, of meant in, in Was it a way. good was it a good clip? What did it go viral or whatever? It was like, not me bomb the clip was not me bombing. Yeah, it was well, a then, clip that I put up. Then you know in a way that's him almost patting you on the back. Totally. Now what I will also say is that I feel like a lot of stand-up comedy if it's not going well is you're trying to convince them almost mm. and not and i'm the kind of person who i say it yeah i'm like you should have been here. like i want to convince you that this it's not always like this right right i got over that i stopped doing that because again their truth is in that moment so i just want to go well this is the That's moment fine yeah i'm bombing in front of you it's fine don't you think it's you're at the point though now where you're not usually bombing unless the conditions of the show are yeah. really bad. Yeah, totally. I think you're a good comedian. I think you're yeah, a fantastic I, comedian. Thank you. Actually. And no, I went I, to your one man show, Heavenly Baba, and I was, I was, um, what's a good way to put mm. it? Blown away sounds like I'm blowing smoke. I was, Al- Alyssa and I were just thoroughly impressed, enthralled, enthralled. That's nice. Interested. <laughs> I gave myself the compliment. Enthralled. And I watched you at the Comedy Cellar. I told you this. I watched you at the Comedy Cellar. Um, I don't know, a couple months ago. In the Village Underground, and I was good. going. My friend is a really good comedian. I'm a great comedian. And it's sometimes you feel. Sometimes you feel. Uh, sometimes you don't because we just hang out. I don't, and I don't watch comedy. Yeah. Sometimes no, no, I'm no, like I, too. you know. Yeah. Thank you. It's very sweet of you, buddy. You're welcome. I, I really feel that way, and. Uh, and your gargo bit is. Um, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <clears throat> I will say. Just this for is I have to get better at people compliment me. I never compliment. No, them don't. Back. I don't want you to throw it back. Mm. I don't want you to throw it back. Okay. I get enough positive affirmation okay. in my life. Sure. sure. Um, I, <laughs> I, I did a show at a place where there were gargoyles. And oh. so I did my gargoyle bit and it, I opened with it because there were gargoyles inside on the way to the Perfect. showroom. As and if it, it was just, authentic. It just leveled. And someone after the show was like, did you write that gargoyle? spot and i was like believe believe it or not <laughs> i've been holding on to that bit for six months anyway what was the thing you wanted to bring up on the show you're wearing right. torn jeans you were you look like a you look like an artist in yeah. the 80s go ahead you know you know about the hittites the hittites it sounds very familiar ancient but... anatolian empire one of okay. the earliest empires we're talking post ur post babylon but still in that ballpark of about 4000 bc okay Hittites, Assyria. The Assyrians, yes. The Assyrians, you, massive you, empire. Yes. They invented beheadings. That Are was their, sh- that was that their claim to fame. They're the first people recorded to behead someone as punishment. But what if, um, couldn't someone have done that before on accident? On accident, sure, but they got tablets. They were ch- ch- chipping away into stone saying, we do this. We do this first. They're the first people to say, we do this. But in the same way that dragons, the myth of dragons, <laughs> was developed in different cultures, both in China and in like, the True. Germanic countries, Fair. isn't it possible that like, because you, you, I will say this, like the Aztecs, they beheaded. Yeah, but the Aztecs weren't until, what, 900 A.D.? We're talking thousands of years. The later. Aztecs were 900 AD. Yeah, the Aztecs were. What were, were the What were the ancient? The Olmecs were, were earlier. Olmecs. Olmec. Olmecs. Olmecs were earlier, but I think wow, they were. Wow, you have a real. What's going on up there? I got a few numbers in my head. I mean, the I know, Olmecs I know were empires. before the Aztecs. I know empires. Yeah, the Olmecs were before the Yes. yes. Olmecs, and then, 
who, who else am I thinking of in South America? You got the Mayans in the Yucatan the Peninsula. When were the Mayans? I couldn't tell you. I think the Mayans were probably around the same time as the Aztecs. But they were beheading. But it's not like they yeah. learned the beheading from the Assyrians. No, I know. I'm just saying that the first people to behead, they didn't patent it. I see. But they were the first people to do it in history. The Assyrians. In, in, in a way that the was Assyrians like, we heard no. about in Hanukkah. Oh, oh yeah. Because they, they were, were not the, fans of the They didn't care the for Hebes. the Jews. And didn't the Assyrians no. become the Greeks? No. Or no? No, no, no. What did no, the Assyrians no. become? The Syrians? The Assyrians? No. <laughs> Weirdly, they didn't. They still Assyrians are still around. Are they? Yeah, they're a weird Christian religious group in Iraq. Oh, Not that's Syria. right. That's but, right. But uh, what happened to the Assyrians? I mean, so here, here's what I want to bring up. Assyria, yes. the Hittite Empire, the new empire of Egypt. Egypt, one of their empires. Okay. You know, pyramids, brilliant. Sure. Massive empires. Sure. It all went away. Do you know about this? No, tell me everything. It all went away. Every one of these empires are all around the same time. They're inter, you know, trading with each other. They're developing whatever wheels and all these early innovations and gods and all this culture and society sure. and agriculture. And what year is this? Give us a year. I mean, I don't really know, but I'm going to say around 4000 BC, Bronze Age. Okay. Early Bronze Age. Suddenly disappeared. All of them. They all collapsed. Bronze Age collapse. They all went away. Every We're, single one of them. They disappeared. They all were destroyed. By who? This is the mystery that, Luke I, bring, that, explained. I, that I bring to Luke Monas Explained. Yeah. They were destroyed by a mysterious group of people that no historians know about or understand. There's no documentation. All they know is that they're called the Sea People. They showed up and destroyed all of humanity. What other cultures did they destroy? Uh, all Bronze Age cultures? All, all the Bronze, bronze all the cultures. Bronze Age cultures. All the Fertile Crescent cultures. The Hittites. The... Uh, the Assyrians, the Egyptians, um, whatever was going on in Iraq at the time in Babylonia. What was happening in Turkey? The Hittites. Now, in— This is pre-Greece, by the way. Greece was right. not a thing yet. What about Mesopotamia? That that was a—yeah, Mesopotamia, sure. That was also destroyed? Destroyed, gone. Civilization ended. So Mesopotamia is one of the ones that—what about, like, the—isn't li that where the Library of Alexandria was? But that's Yeah, after. but that's many years Many later. years it's, after. It's, I'm, just trying, I'm just throwing millennia things at, at millennia you. Millennia later. All right. Alexander is 300 BC. Alexander is still happening. Um, <laughs> In a way, yes. Uh, wow, that's Gone. fascinating. And Pretty what? Crazy. how long did it take for cultures to build up in the wake of that destruction? I'd say a couple, probably like a couple hundred years. And then e Egypt was the first to bounce back. Egypt, they got the Nile, really helps them out. Egypt bounced back. Water always helps. It really does. The Nile. And did they always have pyramids? Were the pyramids all... They didn't Oh. I know they didn't always, have pyramids, they always saying, have pyramids. Were all the pyramids built by this point? <laughs> yeah, pyramids were pyramids were weirdly built before like a lot of history. I written. don't like that. I know it's a little uncomfortable. I mean, this is where the alien conversation gets brought up because it's like, how did they do that that long ago? Right. We're, we're talking like five thousand BC, like early humans. That's what doesn't make any sense in the fact that they were bringing the. the there's like a regardless of if you believe in the alien conspiracy, isn't it that like. A lot of that stone could yeah. not have been had to have been hundreds or thousands even of miles away. And yes. there's just no explanation there's of how no they carried it. Yeah, nobody knows. I mean, at the same time, people in England were putting up Stonehenge, which yeah, is but a similar thing. It's like, how do they lift that shit? They didn't no have offense, pulleys. but like, yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> Stonehenge. <laughs> you and I could do Stonehenge, yeah, Stonehenge tonight. Is, it's a little modern arty. A little, uh... Yeah, Stonehenge is like when you see this table at an art museum and yeah. you're like, what is this? Yeah. And they're like, this is actually $80 million. Yes. Stonehenge, is, that. Stonehenge could have just been like that. Stonehenge is mm. so lame that I'm like, I don't even, and all respect to the memories and the families of the, of, of uh, the Druids. Of the Druids. But I, I, you know, I'm not impressed by it at all. The pyramids, mm. on the other hand. Well, do you think there's a little Jewish bias there? You're impressed because your people built Think them? about the pyramids. <laughs> Think about how big the pyramids are, man, and what's inside of them. Regardless bunch of, of, bunch of gold, a bunch of dead old golden yeah. pharaohs. Yeah, dead golden pharaohs and uh, Anaxuna moon. Mm, uh, Osiris. Imhotep. Oh, Isis. Isis. I'm thinking of... Uh, <laughs> You're thinking I'm, of pharaohs. I'm thinking of gods. No, I'm, I'm saying all characters Ra, from the mummy. Ra. Great name. Scorpion king. Hmm. Did you like the mummy? The the Brendan Fraser one? Yeah. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I was I obsessed it with it. I liked it, too. I, I used to, when I was a kid, when I saw it, I would do an impression of a scarab going in your mouth. Like, oh. 
That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. the scarabs that the crawl scarabs into in the, the mouth. Oh yeah. I mean, the, the scare. One of the scariest deaths of that whole movie is the very end where right. Benny is that his name? Not Benny. I don't remember their names. One of the guys, this the kind of the hollow, years the hollow looking <laughs> guy. He died. They he gets shut in the, the the bad guy gets shut in the pyramid at the end of the movie, mm. and they walk away, and he's yeah, it's not good. Pretty uh, messed up. The Mummy Two is great. I don't think I saw that one. Oh my god, go home and watch it. We'll stop the podcast. You know, what I was watching before this The Revenant. Never saw it before. I, you, you, I, I did that already. What does that mean? That's what he says. I ain't scared of dying. I did that already. Oh, but I'm enjoying it. Oh my god, The Revenant's amazing. I, I went into it like, isn't this the bear movie? And then I watched it, and I first thirty minutes no bear. I was like, oh good, it's not just a bear movie. Well, and then the bear appears, fucks him up, dude. The the Revenant is an amazing movie. It is, people, it's pretty good. Pe- people shit on The Revenant because they're like, oh, they gave the Oscar to Leo because he just, it was a time for him to have the Oscar, which, like, that could be true. Mm. But it's also, like, a beautiful movie that, beautiful. like, they had to move the shooting around because Al Inaritu only wanted to use natural light. Oh. There's no light in that movie. Yeah. Just natural light. It so, looks amazing. So, so what are your th- what's your theory about hmm. the Sea People? My theory about the Sea People. Honest, honest theory about the sea people. I would guess yeah, that they were a proto-Greek people. Because at this time, there was not really a record of Greece in history. Like, they weren't doing anything. But there were people in the island of Crete mm. called the Benean, the Benean people. Mm-hmm. And they were just sort of bumbling around, probably f-ing, just being Greek. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly sea people happens. Right. And the sea people refers to the Mediterranean. They came from somewhere in the Mediterranean. Interesting. Swiped everybody out. Destroyed all civilization. My guess is Greeks. Wow. And then and then after that, eh, a thousand years later, the Greeks start popping up. Are they connected? Ah, hard to say. Fact. Probably. Oh, it would be great if we had a historian sitting here where the pillars I are. Know, he could really but they wouldn't know. Us. They wouldn't they don't know. know. Nobody knows. I'm fascinated by the migration of people no. in history, like the how, like the Aleutian, not the Aleutian, yeah, the, uh, what's that thing called? The, the, the Aleutian Bridge? Am I thinking of the wrong thing? That you, Are you thinking of from Russia to America? Yeah. The, the, the Bering? The Bering Strait. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean... That always crazy. blew my mind. I, I would as a child, I would just sit. Oh, other kids were playing football or mm. running around. I would just sit. I'd read the World Book, the Encyclopedia, <laughs> the World Book, and I would just sit on the ground and think about, oh my God, everyone in North America and South America crossed from hmm. Russia, and they slowly came down. And then I, I don't know, I'd How go poop you think my pants took? or something. How long do you think that took for them? Tens of thousands of years. Crazy. And people Crazy. would just die on the way. Like, I know. And, and then some people would be like, hey, yeah, you guys go on without us. We're going to become uh, Inuits. You know, Inuits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we will be uh, peoples of the First Nations. Sure, sure. And we'll be we'll be uh, Cherokee over here. We'll be Cherokee. And they just kept going. And then the Aztecs. We'll be, we'll be um, well, you, you, from where you are, there's a lot of interesting, uh, from like Ocala, there's a lot of interesting Ocala. native. Yeah. The Seminoles. True. The Seminole, Seminole country, yeah. That was where they, they, they put up a good fight. In oh, Ocala, yeah. Florida. Yeah. The Oki, Oki, Okeechobee. Okeechobee. Yeah. How do you know about Florida history? You want to know why I know about Florida history? From I'm the curious. John Anderson song, Seminole Wind. Roll, roll, Seminole Wind. You know mm. that song? Roll like you never I know it, but roll my people, we don't like to sing it like that. What, how do you like to sing it? It's private. It's a private ritual. You saying the people of Florida? <laughs> the people of Ocala. Of Ocala. I actually don't know the song. I don't know very much about Ocala, if we're being honest. But you're a you're a let, let me tell you something. Historian, please let me tell you something. What else? You know why Asians have small eyes? <laughs> I'm not saying this for the record. I just want to say the person <laughs> of color on the podcast. But wait, that's okay to say. A lot of Asians have have sl- they're called sl- slow. That's what they're called. Oh that's, what that's, what that's what they're called. That's what they're Look it up in the dictionary. Slow. I think it's spelled S L O. Oh, okay. U-G-H. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. Okay. But this is something I read. Okay. Was that there's no reason for so much of Asia to have eyes like that because the topography and the climate of Asia 
would not have, there's no reason that they would have developed eyes like that evolutionarily. Right. But here's the theory is that you've got this population in China, this population in Indochina, Thailand, Vietnam, Japan, all this stuff, all these people that are walking around with more European or Asia or, or Middle Eastern looking features. Right. And then a group of people from up north in Siberia and Mongolia who had adapted to the insane cold there and therefore had smaller eyes yes. to avoid snow blindness. Right. This is like 10,000 BC, that long time sense. ago. They yes. all flooded down and invaded and conquered oh. into China and into Indochina. And, it just and hence, uh, yeah, that looks yes, spread. That looks spread because there's no evolutionary wow. reason that a person in Vietnam would have eyes like that because there just isn't really. Wow, that's so interesting. Now, maybe, maybe I made all that up. You didn't make that up. No, I didn't make it up. But also, I also the person that I read it from maybe made it up. But that's yeah, because I, mean, I read, you read it a lot of good. radical left historians. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, um, re- you know, re- red commies with their their <laughs> with their history theories and their on eyes. Um, no, I um, I always felt that way about like, uh, very Slavic looking people like Putin, for example. Like the oh, way yeah. Putin looks, or the way like Melania Trump looks. Sure. They have Huns. They, they look like they uh, watch it. What your face is looking a little racist. No, that's not racist. You're, you're going, they look like I'm talking about Vladimir Putin. Yeah, he's a human being. It's <laughs> 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 the one the one place I get sensitive. <laughs> Vladimir Putin is a is a guy like me and you. He bleeds red blood. <laughs> don't be sick. You don't like Putin. No, because he destroyed Syria. I, I, hope, I, I know. I was gonna say. I not feel good. Like not a fan of that. You're not a fan of that. You don't care for Putin. Don't care for him. And he, he, he bombed all the Chechens. Evil guy. He's not a good guy. And Ukraine, obviously, is not good. What was the other thing that you wanted to tell me? You came in, you were like, I have something to tell you. I, th- I think Sea People was a big one. By the way, you asked me. You said, do you have a mystery? Yeah. And I provided you with Sea People, and a part of me fears that that mystery may be too great for you. In right. what sense? Because I'm imagining, would it, were you expecting me to come on and be like, paper towel rolls when you, oh, oh, how oh. are you supposed to No, I to have plenty of those it? already. Okay. I was really asking you because I feel like you're a historically oriented person. You live in the mm. past. And, I do. Uh, <laughs> oh, I man. wanted you to give me a good, me a good historical mystery, and that's good. I I'm, think I gave you a big one. Leave it to me. Bronze Age for Collapse. The, Bronze Age Collapse is great. Sea People is great. Leave it to me to yeah. do... Um, where does the food go in the uh, food destroyer in the mm. sink? Goes where you poop goes. Hmm. What is dry cleaning? Hmm. It is not dry at all. It's True. your clothes are being washed with chemicals huh. um, in a special type of laundry machine, and then they steam it afterwards, and that's why it always comes out so crisp and starched. And all they right. starch it as well. What's going on in the microwave? What's going on? The microwave is... Should I not be looking at it when I'm using it? I think that's fine. I wouldn't put your head in it and turn it on. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Um, ask me another... I, I think you... The microwave is... I just evaded your microwave question. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> ask, ask me another one as if you answered it. <laughs> yeah. No, it gets really hot and it shakes the molecules. That's all I know. But and the using, molecules shake rapidly, and that's why. That's I remember in biology, is. and I was I was bad in science in school, but I yeah. remember there'd be a, a there'd be a, a diagram with the different waves, and it'd be like this kind of wave, that kind of wave, and at the end would be like nuclear whatever wave, but yeah. then in the middle is microwave, and I'm like microwave. The it's fuck like is tiny, this doing like this. in yeah. the middle of all these? That's in my kitchen. Did you ever take physics? Never. No, I avoided it like the plague. Even in high school? No, yeah, I didn't do it. I just didn't do it. I did biology. I kept doing biology because that was the easiest one. Dude, my physics teacher in in high school, <laughs> it sounds like it's uh, – my friend said this. It's like from an episode of Fargo. <laughs> but my physics teacher, this he the door from the Boeing plane landed in his yard. What? <laughs> fell on his house. Oh, my God. Doesn't that sound like that the opening is to Fargo. Fargo? <laughs> Oh my god! And he's like, he's like being interviewed. It's something very funny. He's just like a high school science teacher, and he's being interviewed. Um, oh my on god! Like, like Chinese national <laughs> news. That's so f- yeah. That's episode one of season six of Fargo. Yeah, he's like, you know, he's like thrown into extraordinary circumstances. And when the Boeing guy mis- died under mysterious circumstances, I was like, protect my science. Seriously. 
<laughs> like he's being interviewed on the news. They're like <laughs> an ordinary man and a tree and a, and a it, the tree in his yard is crashed into by the Boeing jet. You know. Oh my God. You know what I mean? The beeping um, From news the, bulletin. The, new, the news. Yeah, news. Wow. Um, Pretty crazy that people used to go to the movies for the news. Is that true? Yeah. 20s, 30s, people would go to the movie theater and that's where you'd see the news. To the, to the Nickelodeon. Yeah. Now, I, to answer your question about microwaves, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. And I think in physics mm. generally, I would, if I could go back to being a kid in physics class, I would just raise my hand and go, this is not going to apply to me. I would like to, <laughs> I would like to abstain. And I would like to say that no one really knows. Right. Is that, is that ignorant of me? No. Well, no, in a way, it's it's Socratic. Exactly. Or who's the guy who said that all I know is that I don't know? Who is that bitch? One of those guys. Descartes. He was one of those guys. You ever read... Um, Gonna stop you right there? Teaching. I think it's called... <laughs> no? Fuck. It's called uh, the cl- Radical Classroom. Teaching as a Radical Activity. Yes, yeah, I think it's Teaching as a mm. Radical Activity. I gotta look it up. <laughs> what if I said yes? Yes, I have read that. <laughs> I, I can't even pull trying the... trying to come up with the name of it. I don't even know the name, and I'm asking if you've heard of it. Oh, okay. here we go. Here we go. All right. Teaching as a subversive activity. Thank God I had nothing. Go you ahead. Had to... <laughs> <laughs> this was a crazy few minutes, but luckily no one will know. Um, teaching as a subversive activity was like this book that was written in the late 1960s that was about how um, we need to totally rethink our pedagogy, the way that we're molding young minds in the classroom. And one of the ways that they suggested in the book was um, – do only Socratic method. So mm. basically, like this whole idea, and it made total sense to me reading it as a as a student, which was like this whole idea of like being bored in a lecture, yeah, at any level, whether it's high school or college or whatever, is is so not something that's going to be imprinted on your mind because right. you're bored and you're associating it with like this. But if you're teaching in the Socratic um, method of like a seminar, sure you're more likely to have things hold on that being said how do you I, do that in a, in a large group it's a great question and and it's a reason why we probably need more funding for schools the vietnam war is raging <laughs> the anti-war movement has reached a fever pitch hmm. militant leftists are bombing draft offices and rotc buildings i'm worried i found the wrong episode <laughs> i found the wrong the wrong article <laughs> Yeah, you just found some fascist oh. propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Um, this is yeah, the their ideas were put in. Yeah, uh, let's see. Okay, they wrote it. They they wrote about a uh, new kind of education where teachers should teach by asking questions, not questions to which they already know the answers, but questions that will get the kids to think for themselves. Questions like, "What bothers you the most about adults? Why? How can good be distinguished from evil? Why?" What are the dumbest and most dangerous ideas that are popular today, and where do they come from? This new kind of education was to hopefully create a new kind of person, an actively inquiring, flexible, and creative, innovative, tolerant, and liberal personality who can face uncertainty and ambiguity without disorientation. Now, Hmm. there is something about molding a learner, and now we're getting – is this like the pedagogy podcast? I don't know. (laughs) I feel like we've taken a crazy turn. No, we really have. I mean, you were afraid of being too inside baseball with stand-up, and now we're in in another – we're in another sport altogether now. But don't you think there's something to be said for this idea that, like, k- kids should be, like, they should ask questions. Of and they should think. I mean, yeah. you know, we're, we're comedians. We're, we're critical mm. thinkers. I'm not a critical thinker, but you're a critical thinker. You're talking about <sighs> politics. and I don't think I talk about politics on stage anymore. You don't? Not really. Yeah, you don't really. I, I talk about, about penis. Penis. Cult- culture penis culture penis culture no i talk about who i am you talk about who you are who i am it's very personal it's very personal but i don't do you have it. any advice for me to get start getting personal oh man i would love that i would love a personal luke set just <sighs> just five minutes five minutes from luke that are that are that are from your the marrow of your bones let me think what, what, what could it be i mean yeah, you got that bit about your last name, Monas, Moans, Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. That's a true story. We have a listener voicemail. Before we go, we're going to play it and react to it. Okay. What do you think about that? I'm excited. I like the last one about the um, how, how small, small could a person someone be? is. Yeah, that was fun. Um, I don't have the infrastructure to put this on, so I'm just going to play it into my. Hi there. Big fan of the show. 
Um, I just wanted to get some help, maybe decoding a dream that I've been having, get your opinion on what it might mean. So lately I've been having this reoccurring dream where I kill you, I hide the body, and the majority of the dream is me evading the authorities, trying not to get caught, and just uh, generally feeling panicky and guilty that I might be discovered for, for killing you. So I wonder if you have any insight into what that might mean, uh, if you've had any dreams like that yourself. Uh, love the pod. Keep it up. Thanks. Well, uh, that's all the time we have for today. Um, so, look. Mm-hmm. I don't really know how to react to that. I mean... He was referring to you or yeah, me. to me? To me. Okay. I don't think he knows you were the guest today. I mean, I just heard you and I just thought about myself. Of course. How could you not? I don't think I'm going to keep open phones anymore. Because I was hoping for people to... Hmm call the show with questions about their life but i mean that's about his life i i say we answer it well i was wanting people to be like hey uh where does the sun go at night you know or questions like that right this guy you know this podcast would be great if you could get a time machine device where you could get questions from the year 1500 and answer them you'd be like sort of a prophet it's kind of a hacky thing to say, but wouldn't all the questions just be like, oh, what the hell is this? Yeah. Well, what is this? Well, assuming that we calm them down first and right. say there's a big man in the future named Luke who wants <laughs> to answer your questions, that would be fun because then you get them go like – You'd have to sedate what them is, probably. What is milk? And you what is just milk? Tell yeah. them, yeah, I mean, that's great. What is milk? <laughs> that's, Let's not forget that moments ago, <laughs> moments ago <laughs> – there was a guy on the phone who said that he dreams of killing me every night. And that his mm. main problem with the dream is that his he's got anxiety about running away from the authorities. What do you think about that? I listened to that before the episode started and I was like, I guess I have to play it. I'm in this weird place where I'm, I'm you know, I'm mm. trying to build – my audience, well, but yeah. I am having no trouble building the audience of those who want me dead. Yeah, and that's a common problem for what the, is for that? the detested, and it's okay. <laughs> am I I'll deta- say this. Am I going to be? Am I damned to be when detested? I, when I was a younger man, I used to listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, and I remember one night I was very sick and I was falling asleep, and I had a thought about um, Chelsea Peretti. You know Chelsea Peretti, comedian. I do. Comedian, funny, great lady. Blah blah blah. And she was on a lot of. I was listening to her podcast a lot at that time. I was like, called Chelsea Peretti. Called Chelsea Peretti. Similar f- format. And as I was falling asleep, I had this thought of like, I wonder what Chelsea thinks about eggs. And then as I fell asleep, the thought I had was, I'll ask her tomorrow. Parasocial. Parasocial. True. Like I truly was thought like tomorrow I'll talk to her and we'll sort it out because I was listening to her so much. And so if you ask me, this man's dreams of murdering you are a sign that you're building a a real bond with people. You think so? Yeah. And it's, um, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. He's a fan for life and he wants you dead. Yeah. But what do we, it just makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to be Selena. That's what we call you, man. The Selena of comedy. I mean, I feel like I'm becoming the <laughs> Selena of comedy right now. It, it, it's disturbing for me to get this. Th- I've gotten threats. Was that have a genuine threats? call? I assume. Have I gotten threats? Weirdly, no. <laughs> you answered that like you were about to say you've gotten crazy threats. No, I never get threats. It's very strange. No I never, threats? Never get threats. I've never been harassed at the airport for being brown. Never been randomly selected. Never had any of these sorts of things happen. I mean, I've I've I, been I've, randomly selected. That's what I'm saying. I feel like offended at this point. <laughs> like if they could see my texts to my friends, right? Oof, I know. <laughs> um, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I've never been threatened. But when can you talk briefly? Because we 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 we're, we're running short on time, and I am frankly a little shaken by that message. But um, mm. I was also shaken by the fact that the main question about it for him was. I'm scared of running from the police and I'm worried they're going to catch me. Not like I'm worried about the fact that I'm killing you in my dreams every night. Well, I think murdering you is a metaphor in his life for some act he's committed, maybe emotional, maybe physical against a person that he carries a lot of guilt inside of him over. Maybe he cheated on a girlfriend. Maybe he murdered someone. 
Yeah. You got to think we're all having metaphorical dreams, but what about the criminal? The criminal has metaphorical dreams too. Yeah. But the criminal is the only one who the the, mur the murderous violent criminal is the only one whose dream metaphors are uh, beneath in terms of severity beneath the actual acts he commits in the waking world. Does that wow. make sense? That's very interesting. Like the criminal's dreams often are of less uh but you don't know that. I'm guessing. I'm I mean, guessing because I mean, what if criminal, you know, you kill a guy but then at night you dream about killing 10 guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's worse. I mean, it is worse. And he wakes up in a cold sweat like, I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. I just killed one guy. I killed and I'm in jail. Guy. Or I'm not in jail. Or I'm on the run. And because God, I'm on the run, think I'm, about I'm guilty. That. Think about having killed a person and not being in jail. The whole time you'd be like, I'm going to jail at some point. Yeah, well, that's why when all the, whenever you read like a Wikipedia about someone who murdered and got away with it and finally got arrested after like 30 years, it's always like... Canadian Mountie police caught him at the border, <laughs> and he said, finally, you caught yeah. me. You know? I mean, how many times have you read that? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah. Which, by the way, I think is what's happening to the man who called me. He's probably getting arrested. After, oh, it's 2050, yeah. and he's at a small cabin in uh, Vermont, and mm. he sees blue and red lights in the distance. And after, he exhales for the first time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, he feels free, finally. I interrupted you, though. What were you, what were you about to say? I have no idea. All right. Oh, well, I said I said I said we had to, I said we were about to run out of time, but there's something you wanted to discuss. Like with you me. keep setting me up to say things that I don't have to say. I mean, I started this thing about being a kid. I don't really Do you know. want to get back to that? No, that was not going anywhere. I'm sure the Oh, I know what it was. It was about you. You've never had the experience of like you've never been profiled at the airport. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is I mean, it's offensive. Would you like to be profiled? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I mean, I'll do things when I'm in security to get a little extra attention. But don't you I'll think walk under the thing with a quarter in my pocket. And they still won't do anything. They won't even sniff me. I'm like, the, I'm like the machine. I'm like, I'm looking at the machine. It says red dot on my pocket. Right. And they don't do anything? They go, no, you're fine. And I go, wow. Well, it could be anything. And they but go, imagine probably, you were, it's probably a bit of junk. Imagine you were 31 in 2002. Hmm. Getting on the plane. Probably a different story. You've never had the experience of like being at the gate? No. And having people... And, and having people what? I don't know. Look at me weird? I just thought you would have ex experienced that. Never. I mean, maybe I did when I was a little kid with my mom and dad. But <laughs> you were a little kid. I don't remember. I don't remember any of that shit. You are a little kid. I have no idea. Yeah. The security theater of the TSA has not done much to protect us. No. That's another theme of this podcast is mm -hmm. that... The TSA is um, in the movie Get Out is TSA propaganda. Remember how that guy in the TSA, Lil Rel, saves the day oh, at the end? Oh, he's in the TSA. He's in the right. TSA, so and that's the, the big joke. The is like, TS oh, the TSA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Propaganda. Propaganda. It's really interesting stuff. Um, You've never been harassed on a plane? Never. You and ever I've... get on a plane and go, I think that guy's an air marshal? Sometimes I All see a time. guy. Yeah, I, I, I think I was on the plane last week with two air marshals. Wow. I mean, are they supposed to be secretive? I thought they were. They obvious. are. They are. They are. They're very secretive. But they were dressed oh. in such a way where I was like, "You're an air marshal," and they got on during the time when they called for former military, and they looked like two schlubby guys. Here's my and I was question: like, yeah. What are they doing on the plane? I've always heard air marshal. I hear the term. Well, one of my good friends is what a, do they do? Is a pilot for Alaska Airlines, and he told me. He said. Um, they bring a gun, and oftentimes the pilot has a gun. Whoa. And uh, they're called AI, armed individuals. And the on the manifest, they're given, uh, before the flight, the whole flight crew, flight attendants and uh, pilots are given a list of people who are AIs on the plane. So we don't know this, Whoa. but all the flight attendants know who has a gun on the plane. And oftentimes it's an air marshal especially on any long haul flight. So most flights that are like New York to LA, New York to LA. or like um, LA to New York, LA to New York, <laughs> Atlanta, whatever LA um, to Newark. Definitely Newark to Burbank. Yes. And so on. <laughs> Pick me up at Burbank airport, by the way, which was not easy. Um, easier than LAX. Way easier. Yeah. yeah. That was really not a lift for you that at all. That makes me very uncomfortable to think of the pilot as a gun. 
my friend I don't want said that a, a lot of pilots have guns. Why? Why are you worried he's going to go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's going to blow his brains out. I don't want the pilot to have that easy of a of a way out. It reminds me of a bit that someone Oh my I god. I forget someone had about like I'm not worried about being pushed on the subway. I'm worried about some me pushing someone on the subway. Oh yeah. I forget who That's said great. that. It's just it's so true. Another subway bit I remember that I can't accredit. This is the 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 podcast where you just we don't attribute the jokes to anyone, but uh this guy was is a real New York joke. He was like, "You ever waiting for the subway train late at night and the uh, the trash train comes by, <laughs> the garbage train goes by, and you go, man, even the trash is getting home before me." <laughs> this is, I think it's this guy Joseph Robert. He had that joke. So shout out oh, to Joseph great. Robert. This is a great great that's joke. Cute, I always remember him being at an open mic and just dying. He goes, "Man." Even the trash is getting home before oh, me. Oh, that's so funny. Because <laughs> that train is a very specific, special little train. Yeah, it's just, the, if you don't know, it's just train. in New York, there's a, su- on the subway track, there's this, this train that goes by at night that's just, it's really loud But you don't slow. see it very often either. You'll see it like once every three months, I'll see the trash train. Yeah. You know, I called my local, I called City Hall and I asked where my trash goes. Were they flummoxed by the call? Yeah. Like, what? It's like a lady answer. We've never... She's like a municipal worker. And she was, <laughs> she's a municipal worker, and she was like, she 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 must have thought something was wrong with me. Cause yeah. She, like, she put down, she was like, just a moment. I was like, hi, yeah, my name is Luke. I live at so-and-so. And I was just wondering, what is the dump that my <laughs> trash goes to? And what is the cycle? Because I was driving, and I was just thinking about it, and I had to find out. So yeah. I called my, like, I didn't call my congressman, but I called City Hall. And I was like, oh can God. you give me the address of the trash place? And she was like, okay. And she, like, it took her, like, a few minutes, and she called back, and she was like, yeah, and it's in Burbank. It's a dump in Burbank. And she was like, oh, this was in L.A. that this happened? Or this was in New York? This is L.A. This is L.A. Because okay, yeah. I was just thinking, I was like, where is my Cause I'm a, I'm I'm curious. You're a curious guy. I'm, I, the kinds of things that keep me up at night are not the trials and tribulations of myself or those around me or even of the world. They're questions like where does my trash go? Right. And I think if you want to be more personal of a comedian, you should start asking questions about about Luke Monez for once. Do you have anything to plug? Uh, my one man show. I'm doing it in April. Where? Uh, probably Lyric Hyperion again. It's a great show. Seriously, all jokes aside, my trash is, uh, is in Burbank, and uh, the show is great. Heavenly Baba, get tickets. Um, Smileyfeet.com. Yeah, and follow him on everything. And um, May 10th, Los Angeles, I am doing Luke Monis and Friends at the West Side Comedy Theater great, for, great the, room. for the Netflix Festival. This is a big deal. Buy tickets now before they run out. Um gonna be i'm gonna have some big surprises there who's gonna be on it i i can't say but let's just say it's gonna be a lot of people and uh no huh Uh, what i'm not gonna book you on the air but it's gonna i'm gonna have some famous some famous friends some big names some heavy hitters um some people who are really gonna blow the roof off the place and then, yeah, May 2nd, I'm going to be with Joe List at uh, the Regent Theater here in Los Angeles. So two big shows wow. for the Netflix Festival. Fun. And um, thank you, guys. We will see you next time. As always, uh, be curious, be bold, be strong. I don't have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a Latin catchphrase. Teus Lamanda. <laughs> Which is what? I don't know. I just made that up. It's, uh, oh, yeah. It sounds Latin. Yeah. Thank you.